kind of, you know, change the conversation a bit. You know, I see that you're wearing a shirt about affordable housing, and I know that's something you're currently focused on. You know, what are some of the pros of investing in affordable housing apartments? Mm, yeah, that's that's a loaded question, man, but um, I'll try to hit some highlights. So the pros to investing in affordable housing, one is, is that you have, depending on how it's structured, you can have guaranteed rent, right? So you could have Section 8. Most people think Section 8, but what I'm doing is not necessarily a Section 8 program. Uh, we also do tax credits and maybe we get into that, maybe we don't. But when it comes to the benefits of affordable housing, just knowing that you have partnerships with governments, like people who are on Section 8 who are getting some of their money from the government, that money isn't necessarily going away. In apartment complexes too, because we're we're offering affordable housing, which means that our prices are pretty much um, 30% of the income of our tenants. So because of that, we've seen the market that has really surpassed that ratio, right? So people are paying, if you go out and find just a, a regular apartment, they may be asked to pay 40% of their income or 50% of their income in order to qualify. What we do is leave it at 30% or less. And because of that, we have higher demand. So second benefit would just be higher demand of tenant base that want to, want to invest it. Uh, a third thing I would say is because we're doing affordable housing, affordable housing is a crisis in, in the nation right now. And we have, we have multiple partnerships, whether it be lenders, whether it be nonprofits, whether it be um, just government institutions, government agencies that are trying to help with affordable housing. So what happens with us is like, we're able to, to, have a more attractive capital stack. So we may have 80% loan from a bank. We may have 10% leverage from, um, um, call it a government agency, right? Maybe we have a nonprofit that kicks in some. So we have multiple layers to our deals that make the top line investor or, or the just regular investor, their returns are more attractive for that reason. And then lastly, I would just say outside of all the economics, uh, I feel good about doing it because as, as I mentioned in the beginning, right, I come from a lower income area, lower income family. So understanding that, hey, when I grew up, like we went to the projects, we didn't necessarily know it was, it's just like where you were. But now to bring it full circle, to be able to be an owner and be able to provide that, that necessary housing for people makes me feel good about what I'm doing. And I have to say it now because it's on my mind, right? A lot of people, when they think about affordable housing, they think about the projects, right? The, the, the rundown apartment buildings, the ghetto, whatever you want to call it. But it's really not, not in what we're doing. We actually call it sort of like luxury affordable housing. So you can have brand new A-class construction, uh, pristine condition with all the amenities and upgrades that you will see on a on market rate property we've just done it and still able to do it with the um 30 percent or under income devoted to that apartment right so we can still stick to that ratio while providing uh, affordable housing oh, that, that's pretty that's pretty impressive and it's funny that you mentioned um affordable housing in terms of how they have a negative stigma um in regards to when people think about it they think of projects you know run down apartments uh, I want to ask, is there any cons to it, you know, besides, of course, economists, you know, study income, study paycheck, you know, long-term tenants, but is there any actual con to it, um, having affordable house, especially the luxury ones that you guys create? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, so there's a lot more red tape. There's a lot more compliance, right? Because you're getting government dollars, governments require you to have compliance. So for instance, in our properties, you can't make, $220,000 and live in affordable housing. You know what I mean? You need to have, uh, those are the people that, you know, go out and, and find a place to live. So uh, with where we're buying or how we're buying, that's a compliance issue for the tenants. Uh, you're dealing with, with lower income um, tenants. So oftentimes you may have, um, you may have more things to do as far as like, providing information to tenants. So we try to help tenants structure how, how do they pay bills. 
unfortunately, there's not enough financial literacy taught. So people don't know that, hey, you might want to pay your shelter before you pay your car note, right? Just do, doing things like that. So um, that's when it comes, comes to the tenant base. The biggest headache I would probably say is, is working with the government and government agencies just because they move slow. It's a lot of paperwork to be filled out. It's a lot of redundancy and lack of efficiency. I hate wasting time, but it's one of the things that you just have to deal with. So um, it, it, it can be challenging for those reasons, but I also think that's a, a great payoff if you can suffer through uh, the hardships. No, that's well said. And would you say the recession improved business? It sounds like the recession improved business since you work with the government. Com compared to anything else I've seen, I would say yes, right? And it's not always just the government, right? So, so the government sort of helps us finance it, but it's not like our tenants completely get their rent covered from the government. These, like, we cater to tenants that are just working, right? They just maybe they don't make a lot of money. So think about um, your waitress hostess, right? Or a uh, policeman or a teacher, right? These who, who work jobs, they just, they can't necessarily afford to pay whatever, 2,500 in rent. So we try to cater to that type of tenant base. Um, but because of that, because they basically the same people that you deemed essential during the height of COVID, is our tenant class, right? So people who are still working, but they're not necessarily paid at the higher end of the uh, income ladder, but they still are good people. They still need to have a place to live and we try to provide that. That's what I said. That, that's, that's really dope. Um, that's really dope that you guys are doing that.